Joining me right now is the CEO of BitFarms, Ben Gagnon. Thank you very much for joining us here at Bitcoin 2025. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. A lot of excitement in the air. Bitcoin hit a new record last week, just under $112,000. Record attendance here. 35,000 people, that's a bump from 25,000 people last year when the conference was in Nashville. So I see that BitFarms is actually a sponsor of the event, and I'm wondering what prompted you to be a key participant of Bitcoin 2025 here in Las Vegas? Well, we love this event. We've come out here since 2021 to these you know, annual events. This is the biggest industry event that happens every single year, and this is the one real big opportunity for us to uh, not only reach out to a lot of our institutional investors, but also a lot of our retail investors and really get to engage with a completely different audience and see all the other different companies who are here in this space. So it's a great opportunity here for us. It's a great opportunity for Bitcoiners. And it's a great opportunity for our investors. Two months ago, BitFarms completed its acquisition of Stronghold Digital Mining with the goal of strengthening U.S. exposure. You spoke with us back then when the deal was complete and you called the deal transformational. You said that it opens the door for BitFarms to do other things other than Bitcoin mining, things like HPC and focusing on that. So can you talk to me about what has changed for BitFarms since this deal was complete? So the past two months, I would say. Yeah, that's right. You know, this deal was a really, really big shift for us as a company. Uh, I think if somebody thinks about BitFarms, they probably think of us as the Canadian or the international Bitcoin miner. But what we really wanted to focus on was the opportunities in the United States specifically. And so over the last couple of months, we not only divested a lot of our Latin American uh, megawatts, but we also acquired what we believe are some of the best opportunities in the United States in rural Pennsylvania. So we acquired two different power plants in rural Pennsylvania, allowing us to vertically integrate and control our own power. But we also got this massive pipeline for future development. So for the next couple of years, our growth is 100% focused on the United States and was really enabled by those transactions. And when you spoke with us a couple of months ago when that acquisition was in fact complete, you mentioned that last year, 6% of your operations were in the US, but that number jumped to 66% because of this acquisition and other deals in the mix. So I'm curious, what are some of those other deals? Is there anything else in the works right now here in the US as it relates to strengthening US exposure? So we did um, three different sites in Pennsylvania, two with Stronghold and one with a, just more of an organic M&A opportunity for a site called Sharon, which is about 30 minutes away from our, one of our Stronghold locations. Um, beyond that, the pipeline is really all these different power applications that they put in with those two power plants. So it's not just the power that's already there, it's not just the power that we can generate, but it's the power that we can tap into the grid over the next 12, 24, and 36 months that really changed that power portfolio dynamic. When you're looking at, you know, really what's, what is the problem that BitFarms is trying to solve? It's this energy bottleneck. I mean, you hear a lot about HPC and AI, and you hear a lot about the NVIDIA chips, but what you don't hear as much about is all the power and the infrastructure that's necessary to operate them and make them run. So not only do we have the opportunity to really focus on the development now, but we now have a multi-year pipeline to really expand that out at a, quite a large scale. Now, a lot of Bitcoin miners, including BitFarms, as we noted earlier, are turning to AI as a source of revenue to diversify revenue streams following last year's halving event, Bitcoin halving event, which significantly reduced the rewards for blocks and made Bitcoin less profitable. So where does th that stand right now? Is the priority on Bitcoin mining still, or has the priority shifted to AI? So the priority is really now entirely on HPC and the AI opportunity. And there's a few reasons for that. You know, when you're looking at uh, how do you actually create long-term value for shareholders as a public Bitcoin mining company, historically it's been about growing your actual Bitcoin mining operations. But our industry trades at roughly a three to five times multiple. And even if we double our Bitcoin mining business, we're not going to get beyond the three to five times multiple. For us as a business, we're really trying to focus on how we create that long-term value for shareholders. And data centers trade at roughly a 20 to 30 times multiple. So instead of investing you know, all this money into energy infrastructure for Bitcoin mining, we can actually convert over those energy assets that are traded at a three to five times multiple, convert them off into HPC and AI, 
we can hopefully unlock a big multiple expansion to 20 to 30. And that's going to give investors really, really good opportunity to gain exposure to this really exciting HPC and AI industry, which we're really just starting to scratch the surface of. So two weeks ago, Bid Farm reported Q1 earnings, and I want to point to some of the highlights. Revenue jumped more than 30% year over year, and the company reported a net loss of $36 million compared to $6 million in Q1 of last year. What do you attribute that net loss to? Is it because of the completion of that acquisition of Stronghold Digital Mining? Was that a factor in the mix? The biggest factor here is some changes that we had to do in terms of writing down some assets. So we have a lot of assets in Argentina specifically, um, and that represented the biggest amount of that net income loss. But you know, really, I think the opportunity here is not what happens on a quarterly basis, but what's going to happen in terms of our growth rolling forward. We're in a growth industry. We're a growth company. And you know, when we're looking at how we're actually driving value for shareholders, it's not focusing on the growth that we've done for the last few years in Latin America. It's on that growth that I spoke about earlier on the United States that's going to enable us to get higher revenues, bigger margins, and unlock that multiple expansion that we're hoping to achieve with HPC and AI. Your earnings report also reveals that BitFarms sold 428 Bitcoin at an average price of more than $87,000 for total proceeds of $37 million in Q1 2025. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, we just saw Bitcoin hit a new all-time high, just under $112,000. So in hindsight, do you wish you could have waited? Could you have waited? What was behind that decision? So we're a company that always believes that in order to pay for our company, we need to pay for it out of operating revenues. So we always sell Bitcoin on a monthly basis in order to pay for our electricity bills. It's not cheap to mine Bitcoin. We've got a lot of electricity to pay for. We've got a lot of staff to pay for. And so we'd rather pay for that out of our actual revenues as opposed to trying to issue equity or trying to raise money to fund operations. You can always look backwards on Bitcoin and say, shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? right? But really, I think the opportunity looking forward is the fact that we now have all of this infrastructure in place to get that great upside exposure to rising Bitcoin prices. We have a tremendous amount of Bitcoin on our balance sheet, and we've got this amazing opportunity to invest all of this money into the HPC side. And really, that should be the focus. And when you're looking at how do you manage our, our Bitcoin on a daily basis, we've got a very sophisticated treasury management strategy. So we're always trying to gain an extra leg up on the Bitcoin sales, on the Bitcoin programs. And fortunately, no one has a crystal ball. If I had one, we probably wouldn't be running a, a business today. But when you really <laughs> want to manage your business prudently, you want to want to manage your capital, you've got to always take a little bit of chips off the table. And that's exactly what we did in April. Now, I read that public miners actually sold more Bitcoin than they mined last month. And that was, of course, ahead of last week's you know, price surge. And ultimately, they hit their highest sell-off ratio since 2022. Your earnings report reveals that BitFarms is, in fact, in that camp, selling more Bitcoin than was mined. And I'm wondering, what do you think are some of the factors forcing Bitcoin miners to cash in a record number of their BTC reserves? I think really it's more of these companies are starting to switch over to the same kind of operating model that BitFarms has been using for years. And it's instead of raising money to fund your business, you should use a portion of your revenues to fund your business. So this is something that BitFarms has been doing for a long time. I think the industry is starting to catch up and also adopt this strategy. Um, and then the second part of this is that, you know, when we're looking to grow and we're looking to fund our business rolling forward, the cheapest cost of capital is our own revenues. It's our own cash on hand. It's way cheaper than going out and raising debt or issuing equity. And so that always needs to be a part of the mix when you're trying to grow the company creatively. So this week, a class action securities lawsuit was filed against BitFarms, alleging that some financial statements were inaccurate and therefore misleading. The lawsuit seeks to recover losses of shareholders who were negatively impacted by alleged securities fraud between March 21st, 2023 and December 9th of last year. What's your response to that class action lawsuit? Well, it's company policy not to comment on, on ongoing litigation. You know, we're going to defend ourselves vigorously for this. And, um, you know, really, that's all I can say at this time. 